Okay, welcome to Cooking with Brenda. Today we're going to work on some uh, steaks. I got a pack of ribeyes and one sirloin that's really thick. As you can see, it's an inch thick. I'm going to cook them probably medium rare on the grill today. I'm going to grill in the snow. It's going to be cool. So, I'm getting everything ready now, my seasonings and everything for my steaks and then I'll be ready. Uh, okay, I wash all my meat and stuff off just in case they dropped it in the floor or something. You never know. I like to wash it off a little bit and kind of take a paper towel and, and uh, blot off, a, blot the water off. We'll put that down in that plate. It takes Take that, that's the only one that'll probably fit on that plate. So I'm going to have several plates today. And um, those ribeyes, let me see. How can I do those? I'm probably going to have about four plates today because I'm going to use these pot pans. I'll have to see what I can get on each one here. And i got to wash them. I always like to wash them. Give them a little rinsing off here. A little blotting off. Right now I'm just getting them ready so I'm going to throw them down on there and as I wash them, blot them, and throw them down on top of there, it'll be all right. With them. I've got four potatoes here, and I've have got four steaks. And when I get ready to do the potatoes, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Right now, I'm just cleaning them up and getting ready to wash them. And then my eyes are trying to grow on them, and I'm just trying to get them out of there, and I've got to wash them up and everything. Okay, first, we're going to work on the steaks and get them to marinating. All right, I use my Lowry's. Steak and chops, it's real good, and you shake it up real good because it's got a lot of good things in the bottom there that'll go on those steaks. And also, Lowry's. I always tell you I use a lot of, of Lowry's and I use the Montreal steak. So, I um, shake that up real good and get you a fork whatever you want to use. This, this uh, Montreal steak that I use, it is McCormick. And I don't replace it with anything because I haven't found anything better. I stick with, with the McCormick. Okay, just put a fire portion, you know, on each steak. Uh, when I'm cooking this steak, whatever's left in this pan, I'll take it off of the grill and, and move it around in that some to keep it from drying out. All right, and I just load it up. Just put however much you think you want. Fair amount, you know. I, I cover, here's what I do. I cover one side of the steak real good because when I flip it, there's going to, it's going to mix with the liquid and then it'll get on both sides like that and that should be enough of both unless I need a little bit more liquid but we'll find out and here's here's all I do and of course watch your fingers sometimes you might have to hold it in place a little bit to keep it from getting flopping out of the pan let me rub it all over them real good. Okay, right now, I'm working on a ribeye. I have three ribeyes in here. That's this one, this one, and this one. And I have a sirloin, which is about an inch thick, as I was telling you before. The sirloin is not as tender. That's why I don't overcook it get it cut thick do it no 
don't cook it no more than just medium because if you get it too done it won't be tender and that's up to each and every person but I'm just telling you how I do it and I poke holes in here to get it you know the seasonings to go down through it and you have to just keep rubbing it I poke both sides of course to get the seasonings to go in it poke it real good this is a big fork with it's real good to do something like this with that's got a chunk of fat in there and it wants to grab it <laughs> it's not really fat it's just like um, it'll it'll probably melt right away ribeyes are like that they're very good but that right there that hardness right there keeps them tender work on Mr. Sorter on a little more because the more that you poke this and get them seasonings through this sirloin the better it's going to be the more tender it's going to be and it's just meat it won't hurt you so don't be afraid to touch it now I'm going to put a little bit more of this on this side because like I said it, it ain't gonna hurt nothing and if I have some left in the pan I'll just uh, I, I always take it off the grill and rub it through it it just keeps it teaches keeps it real good and tender tastes good okay I have turned this uh, steak well I forgot one let me get it in there a little bit now and I'll show you a little later about the cooking of the steak when I put it back in the liquids and stuff I'll show you that a little later as we're cooking them so I, this about wraps this portion up this is good too right here them's already tender so you just need to make sure it's got enough little holes for the seasonings to get through there okay we're going to come out here and get the grill started we got the steaks marinating and um, I, I course I don't need any more but I'll show you what I do the, it's been cleaned already real good but I put a little of this on over these it kind of burned off any germs or whatever that may be in there so stand back cameraman Casey blows I, I always like two or three matches and put it around in certain places so that it can get going in several places. Did it get it or did it get through? And, and I, I squirt it all over the coals and all over this uh, grating kills germs it might have got on it. Sure is blazing. <laughs> you better move that out of the way there. While the grills is getting ready, I'm going to do the green beans and get them to simmering. Of course, they're already cooked. They're out of a can. Doesn't matter which kind you get. Just pour them in your pot. And I do a couple of special little things that I do to my green beans also. I'm special to everything I do. To whatever. I am going to put probably... Probably two beef bouillon cubes in here doesn't matter what brand and doesn't matter how many whatever you like I, I like a strong taste I always mention that I like a strong taste um, so I'll probably put two get these little papers off of here sometimes if you can you can break it up and drop a little paper in there so I put two of those and then I'm going to put just a little bit of, probably put a little bit of butter in it, you know, you need a little bit of butter. Probably enough because the bouillon, maybe a little bit more, just a little bit, probably, probably a good, uh, good tablespoon anyway. 
one to two, just whatever you prefer. And then we'll put just a little bit of salt. And guess what? <laughs> Sugar. Uh, it's like I was telling you before, it's either going to have sugar or it depends on what I'm making. Just maybe a teaspoon, probably enough. And then I'm going to, I use a lot of big spoons. There's a stem that don't need to be in there. And I'm going to turn this up. These pots cook real fast. And I don't need it to cook too fast. It's just, they're going to simmer. I thought I seen a piece of paper. Maybe I didn't. Okay, this is just going to simmer until my steaks are cooked. So it, it doesn't. What I'm going to do while I'm in here, I'm going to get them to cooking. And then I'm going to turn it down to a low. Okay, I'm going to uh, put the lid over here on these green beans now. I'm going to give them a little stir. And uh, got butter going around right in there. They're starting to go real good. So I'm going to put the lid on it and turn it down here to low. Because they'll cook plenty fast in this pot. Okay, and I'm working on the potatoes now. And I'm just checking them for bad spots and that kind of thing. Just I like to chop it a little bit. So I'm going to put some butter on them. And that'll go through them real good. And I like to make sure there's no bad spots in them. And if it is, because some people like to eat the fillings. If it is, you know, I like to take it off. And like I said, I make some slashes. And that way you get a little butter through there. You know, watch your fingers. <laughs> watch your hands. Oh, what I'm doing is... Um, I'm going to cook these potatoes in the microwave. They're quicker that way. And here's what I do. I take and I put a little bit of... Uh, I take and it's a little messy, but I don't care. It's all right. Take some butter. And I rub this potato down real good in butter. And lay it on that, and then I just roll it up. Doesn't have to be tight. Lay it in the microwave. Now this is a little bit hard to do here because my hands are dirty with butter. But I got it pretty easy that time. Okay, I'm going to do another one here. They're good like this. They're really good like this. And I put some little slashes in it. And the butter will go up in them slashes. And it makes them real moist. I'm going to roll this one up. Yep, come on. Let's see. See, it's very loose on the ends and stuff. And I just... It's very loose. Just leave it like that. It doesn't hurt nothing. I don't usually put salt or anything on them because it pulls all the moisture out. And a baked potato is not good if it's dry. It's hard to do this when your hands are greasy. But well, you put as much as you want on there. Makes the pillings good if you want to eat the pillings. And I like to eat the pillings, so... It's just, and and let me tell you that I will probably take up to about 18 minutes to cook these all together. You can always add your salt and cheese and everything after you cut them when they come out. Okay, that's quick and easy. Kind of separate them apart there. Now this microwave will only go up to six minutes at a time. Let's make sure it's clear. 
won't do seven. It'll do six at a time, and I'll probably have to do 18 minutes altogether. Okay, we're going outside with our pan of steaks and get started on them. That's the last thing that we got to do is get our steaks to cooking. Okay, we're ready to cook our steaks. I got my steaks here and I got a water bottle. I got my steaks on the right hand because I'm right handed. And I'm going to flop them things up on there. I might have to use my fingers a little bit here to get them up on there. They're good sized steaks. Makes my mouth water. They look good, don't they? Ouch. Smell good, too. Ouchie. Got to watch your arms and everything when you're doing this. Now, the water bottle is because these ribeyes have some chunks of fat around there, and it's going to, it might catch it. It might make it um, blaze up a little bit there, and you need a water bottle. Now, you see the extra that I have in the pan? I might pull these off every now and then, and I'm going to turn it over and rub them in that pan to keep them from burning up. Now, this is something I have to stay with because if I don't, they'll burn up. The ribeyes have fat, and it's hard to, it's hard to keep them from blazing. The sirloin won't do that so bad. It doesn't have all that fat. Got a little bit, but not much. I like to keep them ribeyes out to the edge a little bit so they won't cause a big old blaze. They're still causing a big old blaze. <laughs> I turn them often, you know. I turn them often, on and off, on and off. Keep them from burning. They're thick. Real thick. Try to get it all down here to one end. Now I'm going to cook these uh, medium to medium rare. And then if you have some left over, you can always reheat them or either way eat them cold. They're good eat cold. See how I do that? Just rub it in there just a little bit. Cook it on this other side a little bit more. See what this one's doing here. Doing pretty good. Let's put that. Right there, a little, it's a little longer. Some, sometimes there's one edge here, it takes a little longer to cook. And I want to wrap this in that a little bit more. Or roll it in it. Wrap it, roll it, whatever. <laughs> I've got a funny way of saying things. Keep some moist, and all that flavor is going to be in it. I'm going to also turn this one around because this side right here, for some reason, you see, it takes that a little longer to cook for some reason on a ribeye or a filet mignon. Today we're having ribeyes and sirloin. That piece of sirloin looks good. That's a big old piece of meat. <laughs> and it's not far from being done either. Then we'll go concentrate on them ribeyes. Oops. Look good, don't they? Oops. That was hot. 
That was dumb. <laughs> I grabbed that. It was hot. That piece of falco keeps it blazing. Got some meat on it though. Let's let the sample man sample a little bit. Mmm. Very good. That was the sirloin. Mmm. Wow. It's top sirloin. It's the tender part of the sirloin tip. You ever cooked ribeyes in the snow? <laughs> We've got a good foot to a foot and a half of snow out here and I'm cooking on a grill. What do you think about the sirloin? Tastes good? Very good. Good and done? Very good. My fork and my fingers ain't getting along too good today. You gotta be careful spraying because you'll get ashes up on your meat if you're not careful. Should have brought me a little knife out here with me, but. Ooh, I think that looks good right there. Well, what, what do you think, cameraman? Well, I think the steaks look pretty good and done. I think we're done. Everything looks good. And then if not, we can always come back out here. I'm going to put this down, and I'm going to open this up. And that way it can stay hot. We can carry our pan back in. And there's my steaks. They look real good. They're, they're very good looking and that's just fat right there. You pull it off. Some people likes it. I don't, but I leave it there in case somebody does. Those looks beautiful. They're beautiful. And I got my potatoes. They're cooking in the microwave over there. I had to set them for another six minutes, so we're working on 12 minutes. Okay, and my green beans, they're simmering right there. Looking good. I might give him a little stir here, just a little one. I don't need much. That's that I don't need in there. So it looks like they forgot to take the end piece off of the green bean. Those looks real good. And that's it for now. Waiting on my potatoes to get done. We'll be ready. And I have the plates fixed here tonight. I have guests. Uh, takes two plates for each meal. So I've got the steak on one plate and the green beans and a potato on the other. Got the A1 ready for whoever wants it. I've already fixed her potato. And um, all, I, all I'm needing now is a fork and some wine. Well, here's the wine. Let's see what we got out here. Blackberry, Marilot, it's Arbor Mist. It's a very good. I think we probably should have had white, but it don't matter. Just whatever suits your fancy. Open here. Wine on the glasses, and I'm just going to pour a little wine in here. And again, I want to thank you for watching. Well, thanks for watching my show on cooking steaks in the snow.